Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 19 of my design patterns video tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about the flyweight design pattern. So what is the flyweight design pattern? Well, it's used whenever you need to create a large number of very similar objects. When I say large, I mean like 100,000 instead of 5,000 or whatever you're used to. And you use the flyweight design pattern to reduce memory usage by sharing objects that are similar in some way, rather than always creating new ones. And what I'm going to to do in this tutorial is I'm going to shoot a hundred thousand rectangles onto the screen and often when using this pattern you hear about intrinsic state and extrinsic state. Well every time I create a new rectangle that has a color that has already been used I'm not going to create a new rectangle object I'm just going to share what has already been created with that similar color. So that's just going to leave the extrinsic states which are going to be the different sized rectangles and all of the speed loss you're going to see is going to be in what is extrinsic, which is going to be the different sizes for rectangle, and all the things where you're going to see a speed improvement are going to be based off of the intrinsic state, which is going to be color, which all of the rectangle objects are going to share. So let's get into the code. Okay, so I'm inside of Eclipse and I'm going to first create flyweighttest.java. This is also to a certain extent going to be a review of action listeners, GUIs, and drawing inside of interfaces. So of course I'm going to have to bring in a whole bunch of different things here. Java X Swing. And all of the code that is used here in this tutorial is available in the link underneath the video. If you want to see something that's heavily commented to help you along, take a look at that. So those are going to be all the libraries I'm going to use for this tutorial. And I'm just going to get in here and just start creating this class. So flyweight test and it's going to extend JFrame because we're going to be drawing on a GUI interface here. And I have a ton of tutorials on this, but I just thought it'd be interesting to do it once again. Then I'm going to create a J button and it's going to signal that we need to start drawing on a panel. And then I'm going to define my window width equal to 1750 so it fills up to the screen and you'll be able to see it and 1000 for my height and then I'm going to create a color array I'm going to call it shape color and I'm going to give it a whole bunch of different types of color okay so those are all the colors and that's going to be based off the intrinsic which means that every single one of these guys meaning the rectangles that i create are going to share a color and if a new rectangle is needed to be drawn and it needs a new color a new rectangle object is going to be created otherwise they will all be shared with each other and here is main and it's just going to call new flyweight test and then we'll open up our little gui interface and start drawing on it then we need to go public flyweight test and then I'm going to create my frame that I'm going to draw on and throw my little things inside of it. Window width, window height, set location relative to pass that null, which means that's going to throw it in the center of the screen. Set default, close operation, J frame, exit on, close. That means whenever they click on the close button in the window, that's going to exit the entire program altogether. And then I'm also going to set my title, flyweight test. So all stuff that you've seen before. Then I need to create a J panel, and this is going to be content pane, and this is going to hold both the button as well as another J panel that we are going to create just to draw inside of. Content pane, set layout on this to a border layout. Create another panel that's going to be my drawing panel, which I'm going to draw the 100,000 rectangles inside of. Start drawing is going to be a J button, just like you saw above, and I'm going to give it the title draw stuff and then I just need to go content pane add drawing panel border layout I'm gonna throw this in the center copy that and then start drawing which is gonna be my button I'm gonna throw that to the south all right so we got those all in there so now what I'm gonna do is add an action listener for the button so that I will be able to start drawing the rectangles whenever that buttons hit start drawing add action listener new action listener then I need to define everything I want to happen inside of here so I'm going to go public void whenever that action is performed get action event define the drawing panel is where I'm going to start drawing inside of and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure how long each of these take now it changes every single time you execute this but whenever I use the flyweight pattern you're going to see a decreased amount of time to execute it then I'm going to go for and when I say execute it I mean the amount of time it's going to take to draw a hundred thousand rectangles on the screen right here I'm defining I want to draw a hundred thousand rectangles and there I'm just incrementing I now the first thing 
I'm going to do is I'm going to go G, and this is also going to teach you something else. Get random color, which I'm going to create here in a second, and I'm also going to create, get random X, random, and this is going to be random Y, and this is just going to define how big our rectangles are. This is the extrinsic. Now, if we could get everything to be intrinsic, which means that we could have a even smaller number of objects, that's going to make them draw even quicker. But in this situation, we're not going to be able to do that. And then just bounce down here. We're going to time this as well, except we're going to call this end time. This is a way that you can calculate how long it takes to go through a method. And we're going to go system out, print line, that took, and then we're going to go end time minus start time. And that's going to print out in milliseconds. And then at the end of this, put a semicolon. And then after that, we need to make our panels and everything show up on the screen. So add content pane like that. And that's going to make the content pane that contains both the drawing area and the button show up inside of the frame that we're creating, the J-frame. And then we want to say that we want the J-frame to show up on the screen. And that's how we do that. So now what do we need to do? Well, we need to find get random color. So let's copy that, bounce down here, and we're just going to go private color. This is going to return one of those colors from the array above that we created early on and we're gonna get a random number generator here new random go int random int is going to be equal to random generator and we're going to throw nine inside of there and don't forget to put next int like that and then we're going to return shape color based off of its place in the array and this is what i'm talking about right see it right here this is shape color see and it's just going to pick one of those colors at random so that works pretty well so there we got that random color generator then we got to do the same thing for generating random x and y coordinates so create those and these are going to be very easy i'm just going to go private int and then right here all on one line i'm going to go return cast this to an integer math random and i'm going to base all x coordinates based off of window width of course make sure they don't try to draw a rectangle that doesn't fit on the screen and then we're going to do exactly the same thing here for get random y value so if this is going to be height and of course this is going to be y i'll save it got all those done and we can actually execute this and there it is right here and we just click this button i don't know if you can see it see it says draw stuff down here Click on that, and it's trying to draw 100,000 rectangles out on the screen. And there it is. Looks like it's done. And that took 5,087 milliseconds. So that's pretty quick. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually force a new rectangle to be drawn every single time we want to use a rectangle and draw it on the screen. This is going to slow things down. And this would be before the use of the flyweight design pattern. And we're going to do that inside of my rec.java. So we're just going to go import Java on. I think that's the only library we need. And then going to go public class my rect define a couple things inside here private color it's going to call it color and then private int x y x2 y2 those are going to be the coordinates for our rectangle change that to color there we are then we're going to create our methods so that we generate a unique rectangle every single time so it's going to be past color and then an integer upper x upper y copy that paste that in there and then this is going to be lower x and this is going to be lower y and and that's just going to go this color is equal to color. This X is going to be equal to upper X. Copy that. Say Y, X2, Y2. Change this to Y. And then change this to lower. And then change this to lower Y. So that's going to define all the defaults for our rectangle. And then we're going to go public void draw graphics capability for drawing stuff's going to get passed over and we're going to say g set color to whatever the color is and g fill rectangle which is going to draw a filled rectangle on the screen and there we go and we'll file save that and then we're going to jump back over into flyweight test.java and we're going to create a unique rectangle every single time to slow this guy down dramatically so to do that we're going to get rid of this and we're going to create our custom rectangle is equal to new and then we're going to go get rand color call that method get rand x to get a randomly generated x value and to save myself some time i'm also going to get my random y value and then copy this paste that in there and there we are now i have two each random x and random y values to create this custom to force the creation of this custom object that we want to draw and then i'm going to go rect 
draw, pass it the G value, and file save it. And then if we execute this, now if we look over here, see this took 5,087 milliseconds. Let's see how long this takes. Here it is, draw stuff just like before. And you can see there, creating this guy, forcing it to create a new rectangle every single time. That took 4,173 milliseconds. So now let's see how much quicker we can make it if we share rectangular objects. And to do that, we're going to go into my rect again, and we're going to get rid of this all together. Let's just throw comments around it. And this time we're going to go public, my rect, color, color is going to be passed over to it. This color, because remember that's going to be an intrinsic thing. We're going to base all of our rectangles based off of drawing that guy right there. And we're going to go public, void, draw, graphics G. And I'm just going to copy this right here. And then with this method, I'm going to go G, set color, and then G, fill rectangle. All that goes in there automatically. And file save that. Well then what we're going to need to do is go into, we're going to create a new class called rectfactory.java. And this guy is going to create a new rectangle if it uses a color not previously used. Otherwise, it's just going to use a stored object that has already been created. And we're going to store everything inside of a hash map. Import Java color, and then go public class rect factory, create a private static final hash map, and the key is going to be color, and it's going to store my custom rectangles, and I'm going to call it rex by color, because they're being stored by their color, and then go new hash map, and I'm just going to copy this so I have to type it out again, like that, and then close that. So that's going to create our hash map for us, then go public static my rect, it's going to be passed a color, and I'm going to give it a name of get rect, and it's going to go my rect rectangle I'm going to be creating here is equal to convert it to a my rect object my rex by color get color and this is just a call up here to rex by color say rex by color and then I need to ask it if rectangle has a value of null if so I'm going to go rect is equal to new I'm going to create a new rectangle for it because this is a new color this rectangle with this color object has never been created before and then I need to go rex by color and put this new type of rectangle object inside of this guy like that and otherwise if we already have a rect with that current color created, I'm going to return the rectangle object that already exists. So now to run all this, just go into flyweighttest.java again. And then inside of here, we're going to replace what we already did. If I go in my rect, create a new rectangle, go rectangle factory, get rect, which remember is only going to return a new rectangle object if one with the color that I'm going to specify right there hasn't already been created. And then afterwards, I'm going to go draw pass over G and then get rand X call to that method and then do the same thing for the other X and Y coordinates and then just change that to Y and change this to Y. I'll save and then let's execute it. See if we saved any time. This says 4173 and you can see it's done and that only took 2,210 milliseconds. So we were able to save a considerable amount of time off by sharing objects rather than creating new objects every single time. And that is the flyweight design pattern. Like I said before, if you didn't catch anything, the code is underneath the video. It's heavily commented. Otherwise, leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.